If it looks like I'm dressed up for a safari, then that would be right. I just got back from a safari in Tanzania in Eastern Africa. Now, I thought I'd talk a little bit about what I packed and took along with me. That's one of the questions that comes up as soon as I uh, talk to people about a safari. It's like, what kind of cameras did you take? Uh, a lot of times on a safari, you're dealing with small airplanes flying around the country, and you have to watch the weight limits that you have. So I ended up with 20 pounds in the camera bag, that's just a little over eight kilograms, that I was able to take along with me. And I want to show you what I packed and uh, how it worked. <laughs> I use a Gura Deer camera bag, which I like really well. It uh, is a backpack. The straps will fold up and uh, fit inside the bag. So if you're not using it as a backpack, you don't have the straps all dangling around and getting caught in the seat when you're getting out of a vehicle. Since we were photographing in Tanzania, uh, we spend most of our time inside a four-wheel drive Land Rover. So you're either shooting out of the window or standing up and shooting out of the top that lifts up. If you're doing a safari in South Africa, you likely will be in an open vehicle, and you, know, you may want to take uh, different types of lenses and uh, monopods and tripods for shooting out of that vehicle. But I'm going to be talking about shooting in Tanzania and Kenya and uh, Eastern Africa. With the Guru bag, it has two uh, sides you can unzip, so you only have to get in half the bag at a time. I found that works out well because you're only exposing half of your equipment to the dust and moisture and everything uh, out, in the, uh, out in the field. My uh, workhorse uh, camera was a Canon uh, 7D Mark II, which is a crop sensor camera, and I have it paired with a Tamron 150-600 to 600, uh, zoom lens. With the crop sensor, it behaves more like a 200 to about 800 millimeter lens. And I found that worked really well for photographing animals both near and far. I like the zoom factor, so if you're shooting at the full range, uh, 600 millimeter, and your animal moves closer to you, you can zoom, uh, zoom in and still photograph, and not have to be changing lenses all the time. And that was one of the things I wanted to avoid, is having to do a lot of lens changes, because you're out in a dusty area, and uh, each time you open up the uh, back of the camera to change lenses, you got a chance of getting dust or dirt inside the camera. The other camera body I took was a uh, full sensor uh, Canon 60, and I had it paired with a 24 to 105 uh, zoom lens. And when I'm photographing, I like to not only get tight in on the animals, but I also like to get the landscape and the scenery that uh, uh, the animals live in their environment. So I'll start out shooting uh, more wide angle and then work my way into the tight shots. And I found I used this for about 30% of my photographs. And I also took a Canon uh, 17 to 40 millimeter uh, zoom lens, wide angle. And although I used this for probably less than 10% of the photographs, it did allow me to take photographs that I would not have been able to take if I didn't have a wide angle lens with me. So I would take, uh, take that lens along as well. Uh, I took uh, lens hoods for the cameras. I also took a rain cover uh, along, uh, anticipating we were going in early March, which is the rain season starting, and I thought I might have, have uh, rainy days when we're out shooting, so I wanted to have a cover to be able to uh, continue photographing out the window if we had the rain. Fortunately, on our trip, the uh, rains came at night, which worked out well because it knocked the dust down on the roads. We got the days were nice and, uh, and sunny and mixed with clouds and sun, which is great uh, photographing for animals. I also took along a little Leica uh, point and shoot camera that I have. I use that for my more personal photographs and carried it with me in, in the vest pocket. So if I didn't have my regular cameras with me, I had something to photograph with. My uh, camera memory cards, I took two of these little uh, pouches to uh, store them in. Green one, as you might guess, means unshot ones. So I start out with the, all the uh, cards in here. And then as I would take, uh, put a new card in, take the shot one out, I would put it in the purple uh, folder. And I would promptly then put the shot film or chips into my uh, vest and use that uh, uh, as a storage place for them so I had it with me all the time. And I might mention the vest, uh, I usually don't wear these, but I found it really useful uh, on a safari 
look a lot of newer vests and they have a lot of pockets but they can be really small pockets so I ended up going with a retro donkey uh, vest which uh, I don't think they're in production anymore but you can find them on eBay I found a nice one for like 20 bucks I found it worked really well you've got a number of pockets you can keep your passport and wallet shot film it has two big pouches inside so if you need, you can put a camera body or a lens in here, which can come in handy uh, if you're getting on a small plane or weighing your equipment. You can put a body or lens in, in your pouch. Your bag is lighter. They don't seem to worry about how much weight you have in your vest. And if you get on the plane and you have to stow your bag uh, in the back of the plane, you'll have a, a camera lens and body with you that you can photograph out uh, of the window, which is what I did. Inside the... Uh, Back with, I also keep a newer N-E-E-W-E-R little battery uh, storage pouch, which works nice. It has room for four of the camera body uh, batteries. On the bottom of the battery, I put a little red dot, which signifies that it's been uh, shot or it's a used battery. So when I pull a new battery out of the uh, pouch, I put the old one in upside down so the red dot's out. I know it's shot, so that when I reach in here, I can easily tell if I'm getting a, a fresh battery out to shoot. I keep uh, lens hoods and filters in, in the top of the bag, sunscreen, flashlight. I keep a little personal uh, medical kit with aspirin and band-aids and afterbite, things like that uh, with me. I have uh, little lens cleaning tissues, uh, moist ones for uh, lenses and filters. I have a remote uh, uh, camera release, uh, pad and pencil, uh, extra battery for the Leica camera in here. And uh, that's just about uh, everything that I took in my camera bag. I did take a few things uh, that I put in my duffel uh, in, to the location. I ended up taking uh, a little monopod with me. I was debating a tripod or a monopod. And I really found that I, I didn't miss not having a tripod. When you're at the base camps, the, there's limited uh, shooting that you can do uh, in the low light conditions that you have scenery uh, around the photograph. And once you're in a vehicle, it's just hard to shoot with a tripod. The monopod worked out good shooting out of the window where I could uh, put the monopod on the seat and stabilize the camera and shoot out the window. And I like shooting low sometimes out of the window because you're more eye level with uh, some of the smaller animals. And then if you want to get up higher, up and shoot out uh, the top of the vehicle, you're looking down on the animals or shooting out toward elephants and giraffes, which are all taller, and it works well for, uh, for shooting those. And, and I also took a bean bag, and that worked good to stabilize the camera, especially uh, when you're up on top shooting. I used uh, this uh, bean bag of Genesis, and uh, it has a, a non-skid surface on it. I'll talk more about a beanbag in a separate uh, video, it's almost a whole uh, uh, art to itself. I took an Africa Safari Field Guide, which is nice to have uh, colored pictures of the animals that you're likely to see and a little bit of uh, uh, information on them, and nice maps of the various national parks. Uh, this became in real handy. This is an ex officio uh, insect guard uh, vest. It's like a mesh uh, material that uh, tends to repel insects, even has a little hood on it, so if you get into uh, a situation with a lot of bugs, you can pull the hood up over you too. This worked, uh, worked very well. In fact, when we were out there, I didn't get any animal uh, insect bites on the trip, which is pretty amazing. And I also have an assortment of insect repellents too. And finally, for charging, I took uh, a little charger block because a lot of times if, you, uh, if you're out in the camp and you want to charge your batteries, there may just be one plug in your room where the little charging block allows you to use one adapter you put in the wall and then you've got uh, multiple. There's, you can charge three uh, chargers here. There's also three USB ports on here too for charging devices. You do want to make sure that the actual charging block can handle 220 voltage. A lot of the ones you find uh, in the U.S. are rated for 110, and I'm told if you plug it into 220, uh, you may lose it in a puff of smoke. So I did look at the specs to make sure I'm dealing with a charger that was handle 220. 
And uh, that's, uh, that's what I took. If I was going back again, I would take uh, the same, uh, same gear. I found it worked really well. If you're playing a safari, I, I wish you uh, a lot of wonderful shooting on it. It's, a, it's a, a very, very interesting experience just to see the vast landscape and, uh, and the thousands of animals uh, out there. Thanks for watching.